I was right. What's up guys, Austin from 3Guys Tech here with a full overview of the Samsung and Google ice cream sandwich event. So there's a lot of stuff to cover here, so I'm going to jump right into it. Alright, first off, the Galaxy Nexus. No big surprise there. Now during this keynote event, they categorized the several unique aspects of the Galaxy Nexus into speed, screen, design, and OS. Now first things first, this device will be launching with both Verizon LTE and HSPA Plus. So that means that right off the bat, you guys will be getting some pretty good network speeds. Also the phone, as you guys probably already know, comes with a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. Now getting into the screen, the Nexus will be sporting a nice and big 4.65 HD Super AMOLED display. Now the best part about that is it's 720p. Now that's a 1280 by 720 pixel resolution, which is of course completely amazing. Now first things first with the design. The HSPA Plus model is around 8.94 millimeters thick, while the LTE model may be just a little bit thicker. Also this phone has a curved contour display, just like the Nexus S, but it has a super thin bezel at just 4.29 millimeters. Moving on to the back of the device, they introduced HyperSkin, which is basically just a soft texture to the back of the phone. Also on the back of the phone is the 5 megapixel camera with 1080p video recording at 30 frames per second and zero shutter lag. There's also a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera for video calling. Now I find this kind of odd that a phone with all these great specs would kind of lower themselves to a 5 megapixel camera. And that also plays into the video quality. Now the iPhone 4S, you all know that's an 8 megapixel camera, but that's also records 1080p. So I'm really interested in seeing how the 5 megapixels and the 1080p, how the quality is going to come out on this phone. Now moving back to the screen of the device, if you saw the leaked video, which is now confirmed to be the Galaxy Nexus, you'll notice that instead of using physical buttons, there were three menu buttons at the bottom of the screen. They decided to go with a buttonless design, which may actually be for all of the future Android devices. I'm not really sure, but right below the screen is a hidden notification LED. No buttons on the actual front of the phone. And powering all of this is a 1750 milliamp hour battery. Now that's just about it for the actual phone. Now we can move into the OS, Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, well, there's this new text called Roboto, which will be used for the OS. Using the keyboard, there's some new improvements and improved error correction and spell checking. Also, there are some improved live recognition, speech recognition. Now, we all know it's not up to par with Siri, but it's improved speech recognition like Android has always had. Now, another new feature is face unlock, and that's just about exactly how it sounds like. You use your face to unlock it. Now, honestly, I personally don't see this as much of a useful feature because I feel that you holding up the camera to your face, it would just be t easier to just, you know, type in your password or your PIN number. Now another thing they've added on the home screen or the login screen is direct access to your camera. Again, the camera has zero shutter lag, so once you open the camera app, it should be able to take pictures just like that, very quick. Another feature that they've added to the camera is panoramic sweeping. Now you see this in a lot of uh, Sony cameras where you can just take a pretty long picture as a panoramic picture. They've added that feature to the camera. Now moving into the actual OS. Now the browser has this new tab system and it actually lets you save offline pages. So this could be pretty useful if let's say you're reading an article and you want to go to a place and you might want to turn your Wi-Fi off to let's say save battery, you can continue reading that article offline. Now basically there were just a lot of minor tweaks to the Android UI just to make things more accessible and easy to use. Now the last new feature was Android Beam. The hell is that? Basically you just touch two Android phones and they exchange information such as contacts, web pages, and other things like that. It's kind of what we saw in the um, Windows 8 developer preview. Well, that's basically it. That's just about everything major that they announced with the new phone and the new operating system. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this new operating system, about the phone, whether you guys are going to get it, are you guys excited for it, and how do you think it's going to compare with the iPhone 4S and other Android devices. Anyways, as always, this is Austin from 3Guys Tech. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.